In the last episode, you've seen the state of neglect that my garden has been in. I am now working on fixing that. One of the reasons I didn't do much in the garden is the constant rain. Here in the Southern Hemisphere, we're currently approaching the end of summer. We shift to autumn at the end of March while the Northern Hemisphere is about to enter spring. Compared to a few weeks ago, we have much less precipitation now and the temperatures are starting to wind down. This makes outdoor work much more comfortable. Melbourne has a climate classification of CFB, also known as a temperate oceanic climate, based on the Köppen-Geiger climate classification system. The C here represents temperate. It describes a temperature range of the coldest month of winter, which is between 0 to 18 degrees Celsius, and at least one month averaging over 10 degrees. F here means the amount of precipitation is more or less equal during winter and summer. Our winters and summers are equally wet. B means the average temperature of all months is below 22 degrees Celsius. The gutters in my garden get flooded whenever we have downpours in winter and summer. My garden beds are generally doing fine because I dug them all up and replaced with loose soil. But that doesn't mean that the elevation has changed. I started wondering what the groundwater level is like in my area. now. I don't have the appropriate tools to measure that, but thankfully my Google Foo is strong and I could look it up online. Now before we start looking at the data, I need to make a disclaimer. I am not a hydrogeologist and I may be wrongly interpreting the data which I'm about to show you. But if this is something that you're familiar with, please let me know. I'd love to hear more about it from you or at least just be correct. Let me know down in the comments. To get a visualization of the groundwater level in your area, just search for groundwater map and your area. Let's start with mine. I'm in Melbourne. Doing a search for groundwater map Melbourne gives me the VVG website or visualizing Victoria's groundwater. From here, we want to go into the map portal. Your country might have similar agencies such as the NWIS or the National Water Information System by the USGS or the United States Geological Survey. I'll show you more of that later on. We're looking at Victoria, that's one of the states in Australia, and that's where Melbourne is. Now let's go downtown, zooming in all the way. As you can see, there are a lot of map points here. These are locations of bores or where they have dug down to gather data. Switching over to the water table view, specifically the depth to water table. This gives us more or less the view that we want. So the more red it is, the more shallow the groundwater level is. Let's set transparency down a bit just so we get a better view of the city. As you can see, most of the city is in red, which means that the depth to the water table is rather shallow. Now let's get rid of this overlay and look at the city again. Let's say we wanted to have a look right at the CBD, just somewhere around the city. Now click on drill virtual bore. Once it loads, it gives you some information here. And what I'm interested in mainly is depth water table. And apparently this specific area right here is less than five meters to the water table. Now this area here around the Melbourne Museum shows that the water table level is somewhere between 5 to 10 meters. So it is quite deeper than the city. Now let's zoom all the way out again and remove the bores information, bores overlay rather, and put back the depth to water table overlay. You can see that the further out from the coast there are more green areas, which means that the groundwater level is very deep down. Now looking at my area specifically, it says here that the depth to water table is less than 5 meters, which might explain why I get that flooding or it could just be poor soil, it might be too compact, too clay. And again, if you've been watching 
from the very start of this vlog, I've been complaining about clay soil. You know, it could be one or the other. But it's just interesting to know that the water level in my area is shallow. And this got me thinking that since it is less than 5 meters deep during the days that we get downpours, such as in summer or in winter, the soil, the ground gets too saturated and it can't hold that much water anymore, hence the flooding. As a result, it takes a lot more time for the rainwater or for the flood to drain out. It sounds plausible. Like I said earlier, your country might have similar agencies and similar research or projects. And out of curiosity, let's try a few other countries. Based on my channel stats, the top 5 views are from the USA, Australia, Philippines, India, and the UK. So let's do this 5. My search for the US equivalent took me to the National Water Dashboard of the USGS. Of interest to me would be this Groundwater Levels tab. So let's click on it and turn it on and disable the stream flow tab. Now the map now shows a bunch of data points for water level depths and based on the colors from what I can tell the lighter the yellows are are more shallow while the reds are deeper say for instance this specific triangle here it says it's four feet deep below land surface while this red triangle here is 162 feet below land surface so I'll, I'll be placing the link down in the description for you to look up your area now for australia my search has taken me to the bom website of the bureau of meteorology and we have this groundwater explorer application. I think what I would like to see here would be the groundwater measurements, so water level. And it takes us to this overview here now. And let's say we wanted to zoom in to Sydney, be right around this area. In order to look up the data, you must be in the bore viewer mode, which is this one. And here, you could see the bore depth and drill depth. These are more or less representative of where the water level would be for that bore. From what I can tell, the dark blue are shallow, while the lighter blues are deep. Let's see if that's correct. Yeah, this one is way deeper at 44 meters. Now for the Philippines, it's rather interesting that we don't have a countrywide information database for it yet, but we see that there's a project that has been started uh, a few years ago. It's the FIGO or the Philippine Groundwater Outlook. It's a joint project by the Ateneo de Manila University with the BGS, the British Geological Survey, and a bunch of other agencies. As of right now, they do not have a map yet. Clicking on go to map does not bring you anywhere, but if you go to dashboard, it looks like they have implemented this in two cities so far, in Iloilo City and Pampanga City. So let's look at Iloilo, choose well site. There are a few bores here, and mostly in schools. Let's say, let's pick uh, Pavia National High School. And here's the static water level, it's four meters on average it's four to five meters below uh, ground level and there we go 4.32 meters below ground up next is india after looking around i can't find a, a real-time map based view instead they have static water level maps and the last one was from may 2020 but there's no link so let's have a look at the january one So here's a map of the entire country and as you can see based on the color codes um, that the northwestern area is red which means it is over 40 meters while the rest are shallower in the shallowest areas in blue and finally the uk we have the onshore geo index by the bgs or the british geological survey and in order to look up the water level, I think you might need 
to look at the boreholes. HS boreholes. So selecting that overlay would give you a bunch of data points. Let's see. Clicking on somewhere here gives us final depth of 68.5. Well, this borehole gives us a final depth of 4.14 meters. I think this is the metric that we're interested in, final depth, because from my understanding, the way wells work, you can only dig so far before water starts going in and they would uh, keep um, flowing into the hole. An example would be digging in the sand on the beach. You can only dig so far down until it starts getting wet and no matter how much you dig, the water keeps putting back the sand and I guess that's the water level for that area. And that's similar to how, how boreholes work. Before we go any further, I think it would be great if we could visualize what a water level looks like or the ground water level looks like. And according to the Wikipedia article on water levels, say this is the surface and this is a river. Basically, a river is a part of the surface which is lower than the water table. And throughout the year, this water table level could fluctuate depending on the season. What we were looking just now is the distance between the surface and the water table. That's the depth to water table. Now I'm imagining that if this was my garden bed and it's only less than 5 meters to the water table, then maybe during the rainy parts of the year, the water level is rising really high close to the surface that my gutters actually start to flood resulting in something similar to what you see here. With that in mind, I've been thinking about elevating more parts of the garden. Now, I already have parts like these, which I've already elevated before, and these parts have absolutely no problems with water or flooding. But then again, we have areas like these, where the garden bed is level with the rest of the garden, which means that when it is flooding, they tend, they might have the same problems as the gutters. Due to the sheer number of plants in this part, I haven't had much problems with keeping them alive because I guess all of them are taking up the excess water and protecting each other from getting uh, completely wet feet constantly. But still, as evidenced by the empty patches here and there, there are some smaller plants that succumb to rot during the rainy season. Because they couldn't keep up with the flooding, they would stay wet, fungus might set in, and ultimately they get sick and die. By raising this bed by a few centimeters, I think I'm going to spare most of them from that fate. I think I should get more soil. Again, I am not a scientist nor a qualified expert, so don't take everything that I've just said as expert advice, but it does make sense, right? If you have any corrections, comments, or suggestions, I would very much want to hear them because I would like to be corrected or gain the correct insight into how things work. Anyway, as I mentioned earlier, I'll be raising more areas of the garden bed. That way, they will not be prone to flooding or rots due to flooding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you would like to see what would happen next, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.